So without further ado, I am now going to hand over to Phil Watson, who is going to talk about some of the HR and human issues around where you work and the decisions that you make going forward for your business. Good morning, um, all. Good morning, Tracy. Uh, or is it afternoon already? Well, as you can see from my background, I'm spaced out. So don't be surprised that uh, I'm a different uh, time continuum from the rest of you. So I think it's important to 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 point out, I guess, right from the get go, that all, all businesses are ultimately trade off between um, the viability of the business, the profitability of the business uh, and the risk to that business. And of late, uh, all of my SME clients have been asking uh, those questions. Um, what, must I, what must I do to survive? Um, how long can I sustain this without profit to reinvest uh, in my growth? And what do I regard as acceptable risk? Um, and would my employees and the health and safety executive um, agree with that assessment? So you're wondering now, hang on a minute, I thought Phil was the HR doctor. What's this? It sounds like an accountant's job. It sounds like a health and safety specialist job. Well, guess what? Um, my job tends to bridge a lot of those and indeed all small businesses must find that. Um, if you're still wondering how you must, what you must do to survive or indeed uh, how long you can sustain the situation uh, without profit, then probably you need to be logging off and going away and working that out right now with all due respect. However, if you're interested, in what you need to regard as an acceptable risk um, for you, the business, and for your employees, uh, and whether or not health and safety would agree with that, then please listen on. Um, so the health and safety executive's uh, previous uh, approach was to work with employers to ensure compliance. Um, the general tone has changed. It's important to recognize that as an employer, that tone has changed, and health and safety executive is now making it plain that prosecution will be a consideration in appropriate cases. So you can expect the health and safety executive to look more rigorously at your business, whether you are um, using home working facility to carry on that business or whether or not you're bringing those workers back home. So that really should be class 101. Do expect the worst from the health and safety executive because they're not there to be your friend. Um, Everyone will have seen by now the guidelines given to the business, the latest uh, guidances. Um, if you're going to, um, uh, if you're thinking about continuing business, you in, in, the, in the workplace, you need to carry out a COVID-19 risk assessment. You may already have done that. Um, you also need to develop cleaning, hand washing, hygiene procedures. Um, you need to help people to work from home where possible. That still is the current guidance despite the fact the government is encouraging us all to go back into the workspace. Um, you must maintain two metres social distancing where possible. Um, where people can't be two metres apart, manage the transmission risk. So once again, I've got some examples of real live uh, questions from some of my clients. Um, as frequently asked questions, they might answer some of those questions for you. Um, so question one was, um, what does taking every possible step to ensure working from home look like? Well, uh, the first and obvious practical uh, stages are, can it be done? Is there equipment? Uh, is there software? Uh, are there conditions that allow it uh, in the home? Um, having answered those questions, uh, the question then is, um, can the business uh, put in place controls to reduce the risk to those individuals? Can you see why I'm banging on about health and safety now? Because, you know, my job is the employees, but my job is to help manage the risk to those employees on your behalf. So things that you can do, practical steps that you can that you can take. Keep in touch with the home workers, ensure that they they feel supported, they are supported, and they have appropriate supervision and that they don't feel isolated. That's very real. As a business owner, you may be worried about the bottom line, but to those employees stuck at home, that's very real. Um, then you need to assess and manage those risks. So you need to do a display screen equipment um, check, um, risk assessment. Um, we're talking about computers and laptops, obviously. Um, workstation uh, assessment. Um, is there adequate desking? Is there an appropriate uh, seat uh, where people aren't going to injure themselves sitting for long periods of time? Um, 
and you need to regularly review um, those facilities. You also need to manage worker related stress. Um, so, for example, the frequency uh, of communication or non communication will can and will cause stress. The support that you offer, um, providing additional resource to help people work from home. So that's what taking every possible step to enable working from home looks like. If you haven't explored that, you're not following the government guidelines quite yet. The next question was, well, um, what, what if I can't allow my employees to work from home? What if it just does not work? I cannot facilitate it. Um, so if working from home is not possible. Then my guidance is to regularly review the risk assessments that you've done at work. Do everything which is reasonably practicable to protect your workers on site from harm. Um, so we're talking about social distancing. We're talking about desking position. We're potentially talking about barriers. Uh, we're talking about making sure there's a two meter uh, distance between every worker that is working face on. Um, if you have, if you can't do that, if physically you can't do that and you need to mitigate that risk, then we're talking about putting those barriers in place, which may or may not include PPE. I'll talk about that a little bit later if I don't run out of time. Um, so the next question is, well, social distancing. I'm confused. It used to be two meters. Is it two meters? Is it one meter now? Yeah, OK, it's two meters wherever you possibly can. Uh, it's one meter with mitigation. Um, and the primary objective of uh, ensuring your people are safe at work remains uh, maintaining that two meter distance. If you can't do that, then you need to mitigate the risk uh, with different desking solutions. Uh, people working back to back obliquely is some kind of a solution. Um, barriers, perhaps per perspex screens, although it's going to make it look like a prison visiting hour uh, for any of you who've done that. Um, and also PPE, which is a potential uh, opportunity, um, but it really is the last in line that you should be looking at. So those are, I guess, room 102 uh, opportunities for helping you people either stay at work, uh, stay, stay in the workplace or work from home. Um, but other questions that I'm being asked are, well, well what about PPE? I touched on it there. Um, you, I need to stress to you that the control measures that you put in place to reduce transmission, that really is the bottom of the pile. It's better than a poke in the eye with a sharp stick, but it's going to depend on the kind of um, face mask that you are able to provide or the individual provides for themselves. Um, you know, just your, your face covering that you see on the, on the magazine covers of hello, um, not going to cut it. Looks pretty. It's not really managing transmission to any appreciable degree. You do not want to be held culpable for that. So do not rely on PPE as part from as an additional uh, support. Temperature screening is another thing that my clients have been uh, bringing up. Again, it's not the number one recommendation in a guideline, but as part of a suite of measures, um, it's very valid to check that on entry to the workplace, um, people aren't running that high temperature. There could be lots of reasons for that high temperature, uh, but the obvious and scariest is that they've actually contracted COVID-19. If you're going to do that, you need to manage that information that you collect uh, very securely. Um, and obviously uh, the ICO has got some guidance on that. Um, you need a policy which uh, everyone knows of, uh, which needs to be implemented in terms of who is tested. So do everyone as they walk through the door. Um, and you need to make sure the screening process or communication of those results is not being screamed across the office. Oh my God, don't let them in. They've got a high temperature. That's really not going to help you in an employment tribunal. I can assure you when someone walks and um, they feel that you've made it absolutely impossible for them to remain in the workplace because of that action. Um, test and trace. You need someone who's going to take responsibility for testing and tracing. You need a contact point. If there's an outbreak in the office, uh, you're going to have to have one person who knows all of the detail about um, the, that situation. Because if you've got the right person managing that incoming NHS call, you may well stop the business being closed down outright. If you've got the wrong person 
who hasn't got all the details and doesn't know how to respond, um, then they're just going to shut your workplace down. At the end, um, and so your efforts will have been wasted. Um, there are so many points around returning to work that you need to be aware of. 15 minutes is not going to cut it, I'm afraid. You can only start to scratch the surface. Um, but one of the key things to remember is do a risk assessment, keep that live. Um, do individual risk assessments with each individual person. So before you uh, issue a degree that people will come back, you need to check what their perspective is. Are they vulnerable themselves? They may not disclose that to you. Um, are they shielding someone at home? How are they going to get there? What's the transport situation? Can they get into work safely? Whatever you do, don't put pressure on people to come back to work because that's uh, uh, that's in contravention, con in contravention of your due care and diligence to that employee. So I hope I've outlined and clarified a couple of things there, but it really is only a scratching of the surface. Um, please do um, give me a shout if I can help in any more depth with very specific queries. I can give you a yes and no on most things if you ask me a specific question. So that's been helpful, Tracy. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much, Phil. I think, you know, it is it is a very unusual time and there are so many things that people need to consider. It's absolutely imperative that they get advice. So for people who are listening to this, please do get in touch with Phil Watson at HR Unlimited because he is very much on top of what's going on in this COVID world and will give you very, very good advice about what's best for you and your company and to keep you safe. Keep you safe, keep your staff safe, but keep your business safe too. So thank you very much for that introduction, Phil.